Good afternoon, beautiful people. I am out in the fresh air. Oh, it's a beautiful day. It is a fresh winter's day, in fact. But if you look around me, you wouldn't know it. The sun is shining, the sky is blue, ah, and the sun is starting to set behind me, and maybe we'll get lucky and it'll create all the beautiful colours in the sky. Now, I'm about to stop and make myself a little forage tea, so I thought I'd make a video all about the beautiful, amazing, yellow, edible flower blooming gorse bush and all the things that we can use it for and enjoy and everything weird and wonderful about this amazing bush. Now you'll often find people describing the gorse bush as a weed, but we all know there's no such thing as a weed. A weed is just a flower growing where someone doesn't want it to, because the gorse bush, just like all the plants on this planet, plays its own special role in this world. Now the gorse bush itself can live for around 25 to 30 years, and you'll find it growing mostly around Europe, but as far away as Africa and America. Now it's covered in these amazing edible yellow flowers that smell like a sweet coconut and you can identify it really easily because of its leaves and these flowers. You see these leaves? They are so prickly. If you fell in to a, a gorse bush you wouldn't forget about it anytime soon. Now of course the gorse bush is famous for its beautiful blooming bright yellow flowers that are edible and you'll find these flowers growing all year round. You'll find them in the spring, summer, autumn and winter and there's a saying, you might have heard it, that goes with the gorse bush and that's when the gorse is out of bloom kissing is out of fashion because we all know kissing a loved one is never out of fashion. <laughs> Now, there's a reason that we can always find this amazing edible flower blooming, and that's because in England and Ireland, we have three species of gorse bush. We have the common gorse, which you'll find flowering through January to June, and then we also have the western gorse and the dwarf gorse, and they fill the rest of the seasons of the year with these beautiful edible flowers. Now, let's talk about identifying the gorse bush just a bit more so you definitely know what you're looking for. You're looking, of course, for these bright yellow flowers. Now, these flowers are edible and they're delicious and they smell coconutty. Sometimes they smell a bit almondy and that really tastes delicious, that little flower. Now, the rest of the plant is not edible, it is just the flowers. Then, you have these insanely prickly leaves. You don't get <laughs> leaves any more prickly than that. Now you might have noticed that these flowers look like pea flowers. Now that's because the gorse bush is part of the pea family. And the seed pods that you'll find on the gorse bush, they're a purpley browny black covered in white hairs and they contain three to four black seeds. Now what they do is when the summer comes and it heats them up, they pop, you might have walked past the gorse bush before and heard it doing these little pop noises. Pop, 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 pop. And that's shooting the seeds all around the land around it. Now these seeds are quite magical. They have a special power that I find quite interesting. When they hit the ground, they get squished into the mud and you think that that's the end of them, but actually they're still viable for up to 30 years after they've hit the floor. So that's why people class the gorse bush as such a prolific weed, because they'll go to all the effort to remove it and they'll clear the land or maybe burn it. And that will fertilize the seeds and trigger them to germinate the people will return to their land a few months later to find more gorse bushes in its place. Now there's many uses for the gorse flowers. You can use them in your salads, you can make them into syrups, you can find them in fancy foraging gins. But my favourite thing to do with them is make a cup of tea. You can also use these gorse flowers to dye your clothes and the seeds from the seed pods can be used as a flea repellent too. But one thing you have to remember about these beautiful bright yellow edible flowers is you can't consume too many of them moderation is key you can enjoy these flowers but don't be greedy because they might give you a bit of a stomach ache now to make a tea from the gorse flower it's so simple oh this smell there's so much smell like coconut but does the coconut smell like the gorse or does the gorse smell like the coconut who knows <laughs> oh. You take about two teaspoons of the flowers, 
It's two teaspoons per cup of tea, basically. Put them in your cup. Look at them in there, looking beautiful. Get your boiling water. Here's one I made earlier. And just add it to your, your edible flowers, your gorse flowers. And that's how you make a healthy gorse tea. And I am cold. I need this cup of tea. The sun's gone behind some clouds, you know, when all of a sudden you're like, oh, I'm cold. <laughs> and you just let it stew, give it a stir, just like a normal cup of tea. You can, you can strain the flowers out. That's up to you. That's optional because they are edible. Now, if you look slowly, as all that goodness drains out into the tea, the, the water turns a nice shade of yellow. And that's it. That's gorse tea. Oh, and it's lovely. That's just what the doctor ordered. The sun's nearly set now. And I'm sitting here out in all these gorse bushes enjoying a gorse tea. And that's what I really love about foraging is it changes your walk. Before, before I got so in-depthly involved in, in foraging, I'd go out for a walk and experience the great outdoors and it was lovely. But now every walk I go on, I have a little objective and, and that just gives a theme and a scent and a flavour to my walk and it helps me create like a stronger memory and a, it's just a, a stronger experience because you know sometimes you, you smell a scent on the fresh air, on the breeze and it triggers all them childhood memories in your mind it makes you feel warm and nostalgic when we was kids that's how we created the memories was when we when we found a rose bush in our nan's garden we didn't just look at it and smell it for that brief moment we smelled it and we got all our senses involved and felt felt the rose petals and we smelled it and tasted it and potentially fell in the bush too and that's why their memories are so strong and now as an adult if you if you incorporate all your senses into something on your walk i guarantee you later on in the day or a month later, the memory, the experience of being outside is a lot more heartwarming for you. You can lie in bed. When I go home later, I'll be able to lie in bed and not just remember my walk. To me, it was a, a gorse bush walk and I can lie in bed and I can not just remember, but I can almost smell and taste the experience that I had today in the great outdoors. So that's the main reason making a forage tea is my favorite thing to do. Look at this beautiful shade of yellow cup of tea, and it tastes really nice. I'd, normally with teas, I have to add a bit of syrup or sugar, because unfortunately, I'm not sweet enough. But when it comes to gorse tea, it's nice just how it is. And for me, that's a rarity. Now, to go on about the gorse bush some more, the thing that I find also really fascinating is, is if you chop off some gorse branches, and put them around say you've just planted a little sapling or a young tree if you throw them all around the bottom of the tree that will stop lots of wildlife breaking the tree or damaging it or even eating it and not only will it protect that sapling that you've planted as it decomposes it actually acts as a fertilizer and will feed the tree too so that's pretty incredible and of course one of the main reasons that i love the gorse is how much it supports wildlife you see the gorse bush it is so dense that many animals choose to make it its home, not only because it protects them, the birds build their nests in them, but because it provides them shelter too throughout them cold winter months. And it produces nectar all year round, so it really helps feed the bees and the butterflies. And now time for my favourite part of all the videos, and that's the mythology and folklore. And of course the gorse is no exception to that. It's surrounded by tales that have come throughout history, and even today, in a bride's bouquet, bouquet of flowers there's gorse because that represents love and fertility and the pagans or oh, the pagans what they used to do was they'd set the gorse bushes on fire and they believed <laughs> they believed that witches hide hid in the gorse bushes and when they set them on fire the, the, <laughs> the witches would turn into hares and run away and when they saw the hares fleeing from the flaming gorse bushes they'd catch them and kill them believing that they killed a witch <laughs>
Now going all the way back to the ancient days and coming all the way up to these modern days, you'll find gorse being used in herbal medicine to treat despair and hopelessness. It's believed that consuming this beautiful yellow flower uh, can bring in that, that warmth and sunshine and help cheer you up inside. And I can understand why many people believe that. In these dark, cold winter months, these beautiful yellow flowers, they just light up the hills and bring some happiness with them, no matter where you are. The gorse plant is surrounded in symbolism, and to me, it represents love because it gives more than it takes from its environment. It represents strength because it's evergreen. And not only does it help animals endure them cold winter months, but it also feeds the, the bees and the butterflies through them harsher days too. And it represents hope because no matter what the weather outside, them beautiful yellow flowers remind us that somewhere in the world, there's a flower blooming. Now I heard a quote the other day and I think it really fits the gorse plant so I'm going to finish the video with this. If you can't find the sunshine, be like the gorse plant and be the sunshine. Hope to see you all again soon. Have a beautiful day. Peace.